Hi guys, I'm back. So today I'm going to be talking about Gravitons, but before I start, this is my t number two for the upcoming contest. Okay, so now to the Graviton. So the Graviton is a boson, which is a force carrier. You can check out, I already have a video about that, so the link will appear like right about here, I think. Anyway, um, carries gravity. So, um, if it exists, it would have no mass, because gravity has unlimited range. Meaning, two galaxies that are millions of light years away would be still be attracted toward each other. It also has a spin right here of two, so I plan on making a video of spin in the future. If you're watching this one I have, a link will appear, obviously. Okay, so this is because it is a stress energy tensor, and stress energy tensors um, describe density, flux, and momentum in space-time. So the stress energy tensor is the source of um, gravity in Einstein's famous general relativity. It would be hypothetically rather a relatively easy to discover a graviton because all you would have to do is find a massless particle with a spin of two. So um, it would be easy to discover one because any particle that is massless, no, has no mass, and has a spin of two would be... Um, would interact with the stress energy tensor the same way that gravity does and if two things are the exact same then they're the same so if a if it so basically a massless spin 2 particle would interact with the stress energy tensor the exact same way a graviton would making it a graviton because it does it the exact same way so the gravitons have been hypothesized because every other fundamental particle particle has a boson or multiple bosons that carry the force. Sorry, when I said particle, I meant force. Every fundamental force has a boson or multiple bosons that carry the force. So gravity probably should have one as well as what they're thinking, because photons carry the electromagnetic force, W and Z bosons carry the weak force, um, gluons carry the strong force. So because of this, they've hypothesized including it, or well, they've attempted to include it in the standard model, but they haven't because they've ran into difficulties near planet scale, which is a really huge number scale. It's extremely massive. But, um, anyway. Anyway, these difficulties uh, near planet scale are caused because of infinities, um, which arise due to quantum effects. So that basically means the graviton is non ren Renormalizable, non-renormalizable, whatever that means. Uh, not means. I know what it means mostly, but whatever. How how we pronounce it? So um, non-renormalizable means that infinities can't be worked out. So that means there's just infinities. Like I'm saying, like my hand is infinitely massive. Obviously, it's not. And if I can't solve that, then obviously there's a huge problem there that definitely needs to be. Um, like, resolved. So, um, it's also realistically impossible to discover a single graviton, even though it's not pr prohibited by any laws of physics. So, like, as it says here, because of the fact that gravitons have a really low cross-section with matter, uh, this means that they're really unlikely to interact with matter because cross-section is a particle's likelihood to interact with matter. So if it has a really low likelihood that it'll interact with matter, it won't interact with the detectors very often. So um, even a detector that says the size of Jupiter with a 100% efficiency, which is crazy, means that every time it could see a graviton, it would, placed really close in orbit around a neutron star, which are really heavy, would create a, and would have a lot of gravitons, would only be expected to observe one graviton every 10 years, even in the most favorable conditions. I mean, that's crazy. And um, that's really unrealistic because we can't build something the size of Jupiter or put it around a neutron store, star or have it be 100% efficient. None of that is even possible. I think the only thing that is um, any, what anything reasonable there is that there is simply a detector... Um, and that it would be, exp and that the detector would be expected to observe, observe one graviton every ten years is just ridiculous. So basically, the only thing reasonable in that statement is there is a detector, which is not very. You know, that's pretty much you have to, to discover something. You have to have a detector. 
And so, um, one theory, right here, it says gravitons are a very, like, string theory oriented thing, because, um, it predicts their existence, it says here, through, uh, and, and some interactions they have. Anyway, um, one theory is that we live on a main, and the liquid, leakage of gravity from the main to us, let me see if I can find this here. Oh, yes. Obviously, in string theory, there are closed strings without endpoints, meaning they're infinite. And then um, the gravitons would uh, not be bound to mains, so they could move freely between them. So if we live on a bane, as hypothesized by some people, the uh, leakage of gravitons from the bane into us could explain why gravity is such a weak so uh, force, because it comes from somewhere else to us instead of coming from us to us. But you got to remember, these are all theories. And it's impossible with any reason, you know, like by reason, I mean like possible with, by the human race, to discover a graviton. So if you want to know my personal opinion, I believe that gravity is weak because gravitons won't interact with matter to give it gravity, only sometimes a low percentage, uh, it because it has a low cross-section. Uh, anyway, that's just my opinion, so go read up on the subject um, on your own. But yes, I do believe... That a graviton exists because, as it says everywhere else, there is plenty of um, force carriers for the other forces right here. The gluons, the W and Z bosons, the photons. So, um, you know, that's why I believe there is a graviton. Um, but, yeah, the fact that it has a low cross-section um, would make it impossible to discover. But, actually, they said right here is that you can observe it... Uh, you may be able to observe gravitational waves, which would be sort of a um, coherent state of multiple gravitons together. So uh, you could do that, which would sort of um, non indirectly reveal um, properties of the graviton, I guess we can say. But anyway, thank you for watching. Remember to comment, rate, subscribe, go to my website, which is quicknuclearscience.webs.com. Thank you so much for watching, and just to recap at the end, a graviton is a boson, a theorized boson, meaning it, they haven't been found it yet, um, that carries the force of gravity, um, it's, Im it is massless, has, well, at least it's, they're pretty sure it is massless, has a spin of two, and has an extremely low cross-section with matter, cross-section, means that it, the likelihood to interact with matter, so that means it has a low likelihood that it'll interact with matter, thus making it unfeasible to discover with any reasonable detector. Um, so, thank you for watching, guys. Um, bye.